the broken couch. Yeah, but this is for the uh the
um, by, that, by definition, why they say you know, that's a need to a park, whether it's a, if it's a connector or it's a newer subdivision or whatever the case may be. So we're working on that. Those are due to um, staff by the 12th of February. We'll put all the data together and then have something hopefully to report back to the um, board in March. We're also currently looking at um, dates for both the Chalk It Up event, which we're going to continue to do again in 2019, and of course the Tree Lighting Ceremony. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Trustee Sweets. No report this evening, Mayor. No. Trustee Kerry. Uh, reporting on behalf of the Homer Festival Committee, um, I thank you, Mayor, for bringing up the fact that the, uh, the paper published uh, those two uh, openings. And we do have interested parties in the Festival Committee. Uh, they will submit their resumes. Uh, we'll probably interview them uh, between myself, uh, Trustee Gray, and one other committee member. And um, we look forward to having aggressive, engaged people join, uh, join our committee. And uh, we really want people on the committee who can produce and, and really want to have fun with the community and, and enjoy the time that they spend with our committee. So um, that and Homer Fest is scheduled for June 20th through June 23rd. More details to follow. Thank you, Mr. Caprio. Next, Alex Treasurer. Mayor, the uh, Treasurer's report of cash and investments of the, in December is on the consent agenda. So if you have any questions on that, I'd, I'd be happy to answer. Otherwise, I, I have no report. Thank you, John. Clerk? No report, sir. Village Attorney? No report. No report, Robert. Public Safety? I do, Mayor. Evening, everybody. Um, I know everybody's on edge, especially because of the recent Orland Park Mall shooting. And uh, I just wanted to assure everybody, the board, the residents, that uh, the Sheriff's Department has a top-notch training division. Um, we have a fully operational SWAT team and negotiations team. And our road deputies, the deputies you see in the squad cars in your neighborhoods, are trained in rapid response active shooter training regularly. In fact, um, recently last year, we had an active shooter drill right here in Homer Glen. Um, so, I just want to let you know that we're on top of it and we're regularly training. We've, been, we've also, we're on the, the cutting edge as far as training along with the fire department and your local EMA. We're including them so we all work together, okay? We're also working with the village board on uh, getting everybody um, comfortable with what we do, okay? Uh, moving forward, if anybody sees anything suspicious, please do not hesitate to contact the sheriff's department. Um, 911 always if you think it's something of an emergency nature, but if you want to pass along information, um, there's a phone number I can give everybody, and that's to our dispatch center. I'll just wait, I see a couple of people grabbing paper. Um, the area code is 815-727-8575, and that's for dispatch, okay, non-emergency. Again, emergency is 911. I know some people want to come up to the substation, the substation here is where we do paperwork. Sometimes we'll have briefings, I'll have training here. You'll see multiple cars if we're doing that, or some guys have stopped to do their reports or have lunch, but it's a substation. I don't want them camping out here. So if you come up here or you try and call the substation, a good chance somebody is not gonna answer because we're on the street and that's where I want them. But that being said, I will check those messages Monday through Friday and can get back to you. But be sure to call those two numbers that I gave you. And again, we're honored to serve this community, and uh, we look forward to continuing to do so, okay? So, that's my report. Excellent. Yes, sir. Does anybody have any questions for me before I make it? No? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have there anything? No, no, sir. Next will be public comment. <laughs> Janet and Daniel Dunn. Uh, if you want to come forward, and please. Yeah. Yeah. So they are they're here for the agenda. For yeah. 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 Okay. No, you don't have to step up now unless you want to tell us. No. Or, no. Uh, Lynn Jones. 
Yes. And I know for your, you've got something before the board tonight? Um, it's regarding the uh, Rambling Road, the Eastman and Rambling Road. It's not. Uh, that's, that's on the agenda, so we'll, we'll yeah. say thing. We'll, we'll get you up here. With okay, thank okay. you. Uh, Jeff Minkowski, same thing. Yes. Lynn McGarry, I know you're different. <laughs> I'm not on the agenda. Well, Lynn McGarry here for the last time for the Homer Glen Area Chamber. Could be here in the future for the Heritage Corridor Business Alliance, but for the Homer Glen Area Chamber of Commerce, we had our last meeting this week. They've already had a meeting of the new Heritage Corridor Alliance. But we are having a farewell party just for the people who were members of the chamber, which includes all of you. This uh, coming Thursday, not tomorrow, January 31st, 5 to 7.30 at Ruby Agave, and it's free, so no charge. One drink ticket given at the door, Ruben's food, 5 to 7.30. I hope I'll see you. I, I gave you all a flyer. Um, please come. And if you possibly could, you could drop me or Stu an email by Mondays, so we kind of know how many people are coming. But I hope I see all of you there. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, number one on the consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine by the board and will be enacted by one motion. Is there a motion to approve the following items? House payable for the period of January 11th through January 24th, 2019, in amount of $1,153,763.53. Two, the treasurer's report of cash and investments for the period ending December 31st, 2018. Pay estimate number seven from Ethnic uh, Construction, Inc. for the 2017 drainage improvements. Project number two, including the work in the Woodbine, Meadowview, Chickasaw, Wedgwood Island subdivisions, and at the northwest corner of 154th Street and Cook Road in the amount of $25,593.21. The annual invoice from my work for the tree management module software in the amount of $2,500. The village's 2019 membership dues for the Will County Governmental League in the amount of $16,987.50. <coughs> the Hickory Creek Watershed Annual Membership Invoice in the amount of $5,250. And the 2019 Homer Community Festival budget in the amount of $148,000. So moved. Great. Second. Caprio. Any discussion? Um, I would just ask some new to the community and the residents that maybe staff could kind of explain what the consent agenda is since that's something new and that we'll be doing moving forward. Sure. Um, the consent agenda is basically designed to um, allow for the village board to have a more efficient process. Instead of um, taking each item and voting on it individually, you're voting on all of them together. Um, and the reason being is because they have gone through the committee and um, they've gone through the committee process and there has been um, no further discussion on those items or any questions regarding them. Uh, so they're basically considered um, uh, items that wouldn't uh, pose an issue for the whole board. So that's the process for the consent agenda. And then I would just add that any of the board members at any time has a right to pull any of those items out for further discussion. So just because it's in there, yes. you know, it would be a motion that made, you know, hey, I want to pull number eight out for discussion. So I just thought it was important for people to kind of understand what we're doing. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there any other discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion, motion to approve ordinance number 19-001, an ordinance granting one, a variance to increase the maximum permitted height of the fence located in the corner side yard from four feet to six feet, and 
two, variance to permit a solid fence in the corner side yard where fences are required to be open and designed. The search real property located in the R5 single family residential district at 14532 West Abbott Road, Moreland, Illinois. That's a move. Caprio. I'll second. Trustee Suisse. Discussion. I would just say that, you know, it seems like we've done, we've approved more of these than I can count anymore. So I would just like, for, and, and we all approved them unanimously. So I just would like to see this ordinance change so that we're not wasting residents' time. They have to go to planning, then they have to come here. There's probably fees associated with it. I think we just need to to, um, to get on this particular ordinance, especially with pool season coming up, and, and change it. I agree. The only caution I would throw is corner lots. Is what? Corner lots, depending on sure that's that's what what the sure that's a corner lots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've improved yeah. them all. No, no, I get it. If they're too, it depends where it's situated. Right. Where that lot is, where the fence is situated. This is a corner lot, but it's situated in such a way, if you look at the picture, it's easily approved. <coughs> the thing I'd like to also add is that I'm if, if we can't get over the, you know, changing the ordinance, where, where something's legally not conforming, and now we've changed the rules, and they're going to replace like for like, and that should have some sort of, like you were saying, some sort of mitigating circumstances where they don't necessarily have to always go through all the, uh, all the, the processes to change, to, to try to come into a, a compliance or not, you know, has to stand outside that. Um, so I, I would echo what, what Trustee Rogers said, and, but, you know, certainly give priority to those, to those people that are, are replacing like for like that was non-conforming before. We, we still do have to be cognizant of the fact that some homeowners associations are going to have restrictions on that, so we, we have to be careful that we don't just make a blanket. But I agree that we do see an inordinate amount of things. I, I totally agree. Now, the only thing I was thinking of was obstructed view. Joe, right. I mean, would a permit be issued if the fence would be obstructing the view? No, we would. So that's. I mean, that's the, that's the purpose of the four foot requirement in a corner yard. This situation was a like for like, I do believe, mm -hmm. situation. Um, it did go up to the, the front property line along the sidewalk, which would definitely be an issue, or may have been an issue, but it did. Uh, go past the front setback line, so technically it did not meet the, the uh, word of the ordinance, so that's why I think it came for you. I just think it's one that can easily be tweaked to save people's time and money. <coughs> I agree, but then you also run into problems with some of the southern regions uh, where they have the covenants that say you can't have a fence. So, but then they won't come to us anyway. Well, right. yeah, we do, we don't enforce it. We don't have to, just have to say that they want it. You still have to come to get a permit. Yeah, Correct. the covenant supersedes the village. So if they came and got it and put it up, the homeowners association may take that. Well, and, this, and in this situation, too, I mean, in corner lots and fences, there's so many different scenarios with some of the lots we have here um, with different street angles and things like that. Potentially, they could be a um, uh, um, site issue. Um, so, I mean. But the like for like, the like for like, like <laughs> he said, would be. Well, there you have one there, so mm -hmm. right. yeah. Okay. All right, so this won't, we're not going to screw up any of the subdivisions that have covenants. We never do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. That's up to the, I, I will throw a stone. <laughs> that's, 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 that's up to the applicant to get the permission of their, their subdivision. Um, that's on our permit application. They should check their local covenants. Yeah. But do you, if, Someone didn't know where you lived and I came in, or do I have to tell you that I live in this subdivision that they have a covenant? Or is the village going to know that there's a covenant? We don't, we don't have to have that information. All right, but see, that's where you're going to run into a real big problem. Yeah, if they're incorporated in a way. That's up to the homeowners association to enforce it because the covenant supersedes the village. Am I right, Eric? Correct. We can approve, you can approve a six foot fence <coughs> in this situation, for example. And if the homeowners association, if there were covenants and restrictions that said you can't have a fence, period, doesn't matter what the village told them they could do, uh, it was covenants that they could enforce them. But there is a misconception very big. that homeowners will come to a village and tell their board that they've had approval from the village. Or they're it's very dangerous. Or they want to run into this. Well, don't we get letters from the homeowners association? We should. Uh, not all the time. 
that we should. Well, well the problem is if it's in the backyard and nobody can see it, sometimes they don't. And they don't get a permit. They don't get a permit either. Right. Or, or not all subdivisions have homeowner active. Yeah, so that's the, other, that's the other issue. Like I, where I live, I do have covenants in, on my title, but there's no active homeowners association, so, so there's no enforcement. What I would suggest is that in that application, it might be that already have been seen it. You may ask the question, is your subdivision covered by a homeowners association? And if so, they need to provide that. They need because, a letter. They need a board approval because, because of the meeting. Well, no. the bottom line then is because if, if the village provides a permit based on this false statement or not all the information, the permit wouldn't be that <coughs> The only reason I ask is that I know three, just in my subdivision. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, who's called the Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Cabrio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweets? Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 19-002, an ordinance approving plans of consolidation and abrogation for parcels with pins? 1605-1240-1010000 and 1605-12-4000-280000 zone R2 single family residential district and located on Rampling Road subdivision in Cumberland. Seven. Just agree. I'll second. Just Rogers. Discussion. Thank you. Someone from the audience wanted to say something. Is the petitioner here? Did you, uh, did you want to say anything? Or? Uh, no, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't run. All right. Uh, I think we should it. Yes, I just want to make sure that I have an easement on that property and that my easement is still the way it was now that the two lots are consolidated. Yeah, they, uh, they haven't been taken out. They're still on the left. Okay, so it is exactly the same yeah. as it was. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And you are putting a single family home in the middle of these two properties? I am just, I'm the property owner. <clears throat> I'm not building a house. All I'm here is to consolidate two lots. And then we plan on selling them property and what they're to doing with it, I don't know. Oh, so you're just consolidating I'm it just and consolidating you're selling it again. Just selling it. Oh, okay. So what the new owners are doing, I don't know. Has it been sold yet? We are in, kind of, we do have an offer. Okay. We do that with the same if we sold the property, because the next group that buys it has to buy the same rules here. Right, yeah. yeah. Still okay. 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 So no, you'll be okay. The easement's still there. Thank you. Okay, is there any other discussion? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Cabrio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 19-003, an ordinance granting a variance to permit porcelain tiles and composite lumber on the first floor of the dwelling in lieu of the exterior construction standards requiring that stone or brick material cover 100% of the aggregate total area of the first floor or story exterior walls, exclusive of doors, windows, and association, an associated trim. For sick real property located in the R1 single family residential district of 13529 South Maple Avenue, Homer Glen, Illinois. That's the move. Trustee Caprio. Second. Trustee Gray. Discussion? Uh, this, well, do you have a sample of this tile that you. Yes, I do. Can you pass it along? Sure. So we can take a look. Um, unless it's real heavy. No, 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 it's fine. So here's what we're going to do. So here's the price of the Okay, this is what we're going over here. So it, it does have a 
it's got a zero percent absorption, so water will never penetrate through it. Um, um, but like the actual stone, water penetrates when it freezes, when it thaws, and when it freezes, it comes off the wall. And I do have 24 foot walls, and <coughs> yeah, dangerous yeah. if I put the actual stone up. So that's all I got to do. So then this is the other. Uh, and, and that's other. And that's made for this type of climate. Yes. So freeze yeah, just a commercial grade tile, and it is made for exterior use. You can also put it on a uh, walk panel. This is the down south, you can put it on a walkway. People do that. So it's made to withstand all the traffic. So, and this is the problem. <coughs> and then I got, also got this. You know, I mean, what, you know, what would you prefer? You know, something like this that will absorb moisture. And that will turn green after a while. It should be in the woods, or something like this. It's completely uh, maintenance-free. Doesn't require anything. Uh, you know, we'll never use <coughs> this name. Not like this brick wood. You know. Never, no. So. Everybody has <laughs> And what is what is that? Uh, that that that's that's a. Uh, I'm do, doing uh, this is part that's, of the design. This bottom part here. Yeah. It's. Right here. I'll I'll do. The left side. The left side is basically all grab it. And then this is already. The great tire right here, it's and all the woods go right here, and all this uh, yeah. right here. All yeah. Over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Does that reflect a lot in the sun? Uh, it's no. So glossy. No, not really. No. Mm -hmm. So there's not that much, uh, not that much sunlight uh, on that one wall with most of these tiles. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's those tiles. It's a two-acre wood. And what is this? Um, what is this? Uh, that's that's uh, composite decking it's made by Zuri. Uh, it's, it's got a 30-year uh, warranty against fade, scratching, or anything. So it's also uh, maintenance-free for the next 30 years. So. Okay. And it looks, um, it looks in, natural. And you're so. the architect, correct? Right? Yes. And you're a certified architect? Uh, in Europe. In Europe. Mm -hmm. Have you built homes with this before? No. This is the first time you built this? So I'd like to ask, um, I was I was at the site and I was on the north side where this white tile, it's a much larger tile in the field than right? yes. 32, 32. Yes. So it was uh, it was installed already on the north facing wall on the slanted portion. And um, I, I believe I've gotten the answer to this, but I'd like to hear from you. It's canted back, the wall is, so basically you're defying gravity. There's a, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a 17, 17 degree pitch on that wall, and it's 24 feet high. Right. So uh, being, that being said, if I put natural stone up on that, you know. No, I'm not okay with the tile. I just want to make sure oh. the application that it's being stuck on the walls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we did get uh, from the manufacturer. We got the specs. And as long as I'm using uh, their motor or, or glue and, uh, and the Duroc that they recommended, uh, they, they said it should be a problem. So I got that right. Yeah, it looked like it was well installed in this portion that I was able to see with the nice tight ground uh, uh, lines on it and everything. It looks like it's, it's a, to my eye. I like this house. I like your I like your architectural work there. Um, I think the house is going to look stunning in the porcelain tiles as opposed to having the small up right here. Yeah, having the subway look. So I th this uh, and once you see the house in person and you see the tiles that are installed. Yeah, it is just the sample is deceiving because that does look like something that you would put in your home. But right. these are huge slabs. Yeah, that are yeah that's it's just a small sample. sample. But it looks like. But when you go out there, it's and the drought and everything. It's almost all flush together, so it looks almost exactly like the drawings. Yeah. There, there's very minimal grout lines between the two. Is this the same that's on the roof, too? Uh, roof. What's on the roof? Uh, it's, a, it's a torch down. It's, it's a what? Torch down. It's, it's, a, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smooth. It's, it's, it's just they call it modified roofing. Yeah, modified roofing. That's what, yeah. So modified roofing. It's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a low pitch roof, so. Nobody can really see it anyway, and then it's, it's, it's pretty much, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a solid. Uh, you see it very commonly seen on top of Commercial. They don't, use, they don't use shingle on top of right. They burn the product down the ceiling. And when I visited the site, I did have an opportunity to talk to the neighbors to the north, and um, you know, he has a very clear view of the north wall, obviously. Um, he told me he has no problems with this either. He said it's a, it's a great looking house. And he appreciates the job you're doing there. He said your, your build set is very clean and well taken care of. So, thank you. Are there any other questions? Madam Clerk, please you call the roll. Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Cabrera? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. 
What's your carries? We'd like to know in the house one minute. <laughs> You're all set. It's approved. Well, let's not stop by and take you guys around. So, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. God bless. Next would be a parade and festival. Is a motion to change the name of the parade and festival committee to the Homer Community Festival. That's a move. Jeffrey on. Second. Sweet. Discussion. Is there any budget implications? To change the name? No. We, so we're going to change the last sign? No, we do new signage. Um, mm -hmm. The reason for the change is that um, obviously the village is taking over the festival as it relates to the proprietor of the festival. And the township is going to continue their efforts toward the parade. Um, they may ask us for assistance with what their needs are. And we are going to move forward. So we just remove the parade name from the festival committee just simply because we are going to strictly concentrate on that. So they'll do the parade, we'll do the bus. My assumption is they're going to do the parade. I, I don't know if they're continuing it, but my assumption is they're going to continue. It's been a long-standing tradition, um, and they will reach out to us if they need assistance with anything, and we will respond accordingly. And then um, we'll get a new logo? No, the logo's going to stay the same. Oh, that's it. Okay. It's still the home. It's still, it's still the home fest. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's sweet. It's sweet a little bit. I mean, Keith has already got some designs. <laughs> It's tweaked a little bit. Uh, but well, let's, let's see it before our client. Yeah. That's why I don't see it on the street. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not tweaked that much. <laughs> it's still a sun and it still says home and less. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll go to Madam yeah. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Uh, Trustee Sweet? Aye. Uh, Trustee Roberts? Aye. Uh, Trustee Caprio? Aye. Uh, Trustee Graham? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Next, is there a motion to approve the mayor's appointment of Mike DeVivo, Ed Callis, Sarah Rednick, and Debbie Stevens to the Parade and Festival Committee through May 31st, 2019? That would be the Homer Community Festival Committee, which would be the Homer Community Festival. I said, like, okay, I said, Trustee Gray, Trustee Cabrio, and I'll just explain that, that uh, for discussion purposes. Um, the township does not want to take on any liability for their uh, elected officials and or staff to be on this committee, and we understand that. So we're taking on the responsibility of bringing and engaging the same individuals that were on our committee throughout the past several years um, as residents of Homer Glen. Um, so we are taking on the same people, uh, and with what the mayor had said earlier, we do have a position available. As a matter of fact, I mean, we really could have as many positions as we want. We only have one available. Uh, there's two available total with two different committees. But we can always increase the number of uh, committee members. I don't want too many chefs in the kitchen. So we will respond accordingly with the applicants that have submitted uh, resumes. And if we feel a need and there is a, a, a good response to active participants, we will make sure that we, uh, we can increase that number at some other time. We're also looking for volunteers. We always want volunteers. I should bring you a couple of people who want volunteers. Next. We want someone to run the volunteerism, and we need somebody to run our website. So we'll put that up. Is there any other discussion? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Aye. Trustee Gray? Aye. Motion carries. Next, is there a motion to authorize the mayor into, to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with Homer Township Middle District to provide services for setup, operation, and teardown of the 2019 Homer Community Festival? I salute. Mr. Caprio? I'll second. Mr. Suisse? Discussion? I will, I guess, respond on this as well. Um, the township has, or uh, the road district has always been a key partner. Mike DeVivo and his staff have done a fantastic job over the years. Again, because we're taking this on as a sole ownership or proprietorship, um, they have agreed to discount and uh, invoice us for their services, but to uh, not to exceed, I think it was $8,000, um, which is a great value to our community. I think in the past it's cost them more than that. And Mike has been uh, instrumental uh, Mike DeVivo has been instrumental in uh, assisting us uh, with parking, 
with navigating with logistics, and he is training, I shouldn't say training, John Robinson would get offended, <laughs> but he has mentored John Robinson uh, to help us with that, because John, obviously, being facilities manager here, will assist us <coughs> in the future, as well as Mike DeVivo, and um, so I think it's a, it's a huge uh, success and uh, bonus for us to have his ability and capability. Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the GIS services fee proposal from Redditor to Nelly and Associates, Inc. in the amount not to exceed $10,000? Yes, Trustee Gray? I'll second. Trustee Sweet? Discussion? I have uh, one question for Director uh, Gaddy. Um, the ten thousand dollars is that not, not, I don't have a problem with the number ten thousand dollars. I'm just wondering how you arrived at that. You have a, um, a schedule of what the, the hourly fees are, and will this cover us for the time period that we're talking about? Uh, that's for the included in the budget, so I kind of use that figure as the maximum. Uh, so this is pay as you go for each project. So doesn't mean we're going to spend the entire ten thousand. It's up to ten thousand dollars in, in, in this. Okay. I mean, they, we're not going to get in the middle of a project and run out of that and have to scramble to reappropriate money. Uh, we, we're not taking on the, you know, that size projects. These are routine projects, like updating the zoning map and uh, okay. that kind of projects. Thank you. Another discussion? <coughs> Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Trustee Sweets? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Grant? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Is there a motion to approve the final payment to Frank Beria and Sun Builders, Inc. for the Building School Park in the amount of $26,400? I salute. Trustee Gabriel. Second. Trustee Rogers. Discussion? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Motion carries. Next, is there a motion to retain the other drain system and acquire a drainage easement for the Hunt Club Wood Subdivision, Swades Lake Outfall, as constructed by the Village of Homer Glen? <coughs> so, Trustee Gray. Second. Trustee Caprio. Discussion? Um, do you want to sign us what this is? Sure. Uh, back in 2013, 2014, we had constructed it. Uh, as part of the, it was the outlet for the Hunt Club Wood subdivision, basically the Studs Lake uh, portion of that subdivision. Uh, when the subdivision was constructed, uh, before the subdivision was there, obviously the, the water was allowed to drain into the farm field and it was run off during the storms. But after the subdivision, you have the, all of the various septic fields, the sump pumps and whatever, so there's been a constant flow. So uh, there were issues uh, of erosion and, and drainage issues on the east side of uh, Haas Road uh, due to the uh, flows from the subdivision. So uh, as I said, in 2013, 2014, the village constructed uh, a storm sewer uh, and an underdrain system for that area. Uh, there's been some um, issues with it recently where it needs some maintenance. Uh, we've had conversations with the Homer Township Power Department uh, in order for them to really get and be able to maintain it, we need to get an easement across uh, that property so that they can uh, go onto the, that property and maintain the storm sewer. So uh, this was brought to the Public Services and Safety Committee meeting back in December, uh, where it was discussed and uh, with the committee unanimously, unanimously uh, recommended approval of obtaining an easement. What kind of maintenance are, is it required? What does it need? Uh, it's very likely that it just needs to be jetted out. Not, they haven't even been scoped yet because of the fact that there's no easement over it. And they're not sure about the jetting because they're not sure of the construction of it and whether jetting might destroy it. So the first thing is to get the easement so that they can get a scope down there and see what, what they're up against and then hopefully formulate a plan based on that. Um, but it, 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 in the second page, the back of the first page of their ordinance has another highlighted uh, portion of this. And 
you know, this is something we discussed at public services that, you know, there are a lot of these types of issues around the village um, between, you know, drainage that goes from one piece of property to another and how we address those things as well as the creeks and all those. So, right, because I'm, I'm like three doors down from them and I have a drainage that goes onto my property and I've always been told, well, you got to maintain it. So, I have a better yeah. to clean it out and do this and that. And we were, we were, um, we were certainly sensitive to that when we discussed this at the at the meeting at our, at our committee meeting. But the fact that the village I, and built I, and this I, and piece, I totally but that don't that, have a uh, right. an over it, that's what kind of tipped the scales, of saying that you know we need to kind of take responsibility yeah, for this one because the village put this in, right? And the one that was put in for mine, God knows who put that in a right. million years ago. Right, but in, in in the broader sense, I think we all agree that at some point, you know, there are things like creeks and things like that, we, which we say all the time that, you know, homeowners are, are responsible for those creeks. But if homeowners get to the point where either they don't have the financial fortitude or even, you know, well, let's face it, numbers are getting younger, go out and take down the tree that just impacted the, the creek. You know, we know that there's a broader issue there. That's going to impact people up and down that creek. Um, I don't want to use any metaphors <laughs> with the creek, but you know we, we know how that's going to go. So we, we probably need to start addressing these things. On how are we going to go forward handling this? You know, we can't just send crews out onto private property, but you know we have to have some some way of addressing these things. Right. I mean, because to say to put it on the property owner to uh, basically repair a, a drainage that was put in by somebody else, and to put that financial burden on somebody is a lot. So then that owner says, well, I'm not doing it. So then the ramifications could be that, sure. you know. Um, and with this particular piece here, Hunt Club came second. And these people on the east were there all there first, maybe with the exception of two or three new homes. So we're all getting the burden of that development and the excess water and all of that other stuff coming through, coming through the culverts that, you know, were that, that stuff was designed to go into these culverts, um, or the, the pipes, whatever you want to call them. So when that, when that was engineered, they said, hey, you can tie into these culverts. And then Mr. Nessie got his replaced by the village for whatever reason, but the other ones haven't really been addressed. And so all of that excess water coming through all of those culverts underneath the, the property and onto our property, you know, now it's the burden that is on us to take care of it, you know, and I, I mean, I've shown pictures of what it looks like on heavy rain days where I have, you know, 30 dead fish in my yard because we get so much water and bubbles from soap and things like that. So it is something that we definitely need to address. I'm not just saying on the past road throughout the village. I mean, we had a discussion with somebody just just this past week about the trees going in the creek right. and who's going to pick it up. And right. my grandma and grandpa live there, you know, who's going to go out there and get it. But, um, so. Mike, how many do you feel are, are in the village that are in need? There's a ton of them, probably. I mean, and it's something that we'll probably have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, some of the things, you know, I know the highway department, when they can and when they can reach it from the road, you know, they do what they can. So, you know, the locate, it's going to depend on the location. You know, like I said, it'll, it'll probably be a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Madam Clerk, would you please call the board? Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Cabrio? Aye. Trustee Gray? Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Could we look into that and get a better feel of what we're looking at before we open up one giant can of worms? Sure. We can certainly do that. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 19-004, an ordinance establishing term limits for the office of the village president? I so move. Trustee Caprio. I'll second. Trustee Sweets. Discussion. Uh, if everyone remembers when I ran, the first thing I did is I put term limits. I don't think anyone needs to be in office for more than two terms. Uh, so all we are doing is just making sure this stays uh, so everyone that comes in here has to follow the same rules uh, that we're following right now and if they want to change it they're going to bring it back to a referendum to change it but right now it's locked in 
so no one can run more than two terms. And I am coming into my second term, and that will be my last one. Uh, next, no. Uh, discussion. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Suisse? Aye. Motion carries. The next is going to be a workshop item. Uh, like some most chapter of the Code of the Village of Homer Glen related to FEMA's updated firm maps and flood insurance study. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, is FEMA is finally uh, updating the stormwater, the, the firm maps in Will County. Pretty much everybody in, in the state of Illinois has had their maps updated for several years. Uh, it was my understanding that there were some issues uh, in the city of Joliet uh, that has delayed the, the completion of the maps for several years. So that process is finally uh, just on the horizon. Uh, the maps are scheduled to be uh, fully implemented February 15th of 2019. As part of that, uh, that updating of the maps, FEMA is requiring that uh, all communities in Will County uh, modify or, or update their or stormwater ordinances to reference the new map panels and the new flood insurance study. Uh, and they had submitted uh, through the Illinois Department of Natural Resource a uh, letter was submitted to all communities basically stating that, uh, that information. Uh, so uh, the Village of Hamlin staff we began reviewing what uh, what changes were necessary, how we were going to go about uh, making these changes to meet to make sure that we were in compliance with the, uh, the FEMA requirements. Uh, we looked at a couple different options. One option that some communities are doing is they're adopting the current Will County, the new Will County stormwater ordinance, which basically Will County has made the changes and they've added these uh, map panels into their ordinance. Uh, so by adopting them, you're basically adopting or, or adding these panels um, to your ordinance. Uh, the second option that we were looking at was is making some changes to our current ordinance. Um, and uh, that's the initial um, process that we were planning on doing. Uh, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources is, is doing a review of the various ordinance and ordinance changes on behalf of FEMA. So we made those changes. We brought those to the Public Service and Safety Committee at the uh, beginning of December. Uh, the committee uh, approved the recommendations uh, to go forward. We submitted uh, red line copies of our ordinance change to the Illinois Department of Natural Resource. However, during their review, they, saw, they found some other issues with other portions of our ordinance that would need to be adjusted or modified in order to meet the requirements of FEMA. Uh, so at their recommendation, uh, they had stated it would probably be the quickest and easiest to adopt uh, the Will County stormwater, stormwater ordinance as well. Now, the Village of Homer Glen, actually in 2003, uh, we did adopt their stormwater ordinance. So as a community in Will County, we're, we're bound to, at a minimum, meet their requirements uh, for any of their ordinance uh, sections. Uh, we can be more uh, restrictive in our ordinance, but we cannot be less restrictive than the county. So, as I said, in 2003, we already adopted the, the county's ordinance. Uh, in 2009, we adopted our current ordinance, and that's been in place, obviously, since 2009. Um, there is actually a reference in, in our current ordinance that basically states that uh, at the time we adopted, and basically that section reads, uh, the village of Homer Glen is part of Will County and is therefore subject to and under the regulations of the Will County Stormwater Management Ordinance. In any cases where the village of Homer Glen Stormwater Management Ordinance and the Will County Stormwater Management Ordinance are in conflict, the more restrictive of the two shall govern. So basically, um, at that point, um, again, we were still under the Will County Ordinance, but we had our, our new code, and whichever section uh, parts of the, whatever ordinance sections were more restrictive, those were the ones that were, uh, the ones that would uh, follow through. So I, I know there were certain things in our ordinance that we wanted to be, uh, I guess, more restrictive on as far as setbacks from, from creeks, wetlands, things of that nature. Uh, so all of those things, uh, at that time, those would, would basically supersede whatever the county had, uh, if, if they had any setbacks or, or if they did, our ordinance would supersede theirs. 
Um, but like I said, now FEMA is requiring that we need to make some changes to our rates to meet the FEMA requirements for the, the flood insurance maps. So uh, what we're proposing to do is, uh, and I talked to uh, the village attorney also, uh, is to adopt the county's ordinance, but we're still gonna have uh, wording in there so that basically, just as, as it was before, anything, uh, we have to at least meet the minimum requirements of the county's ordinance, but anything that is more restrictive in our ordinance will still uh, supersede. Uh, and then in addition to adopting the county's ordinance, we're going to make three definition changes in our current ordinance uh, for flood insurance rate map, uh, flood insurance study, and then the flood plan. And in the section for the flood plan, that's where we're going to add the various map panels uh, for Will County. And because we actually have three lots that are actually in Cook County, we're also adding the Cook County maps that would be appropriate for those locations as well too. So uh, we've, re we've submitted this information to uh, the IDNR. They've reviewed the, the recommended or the changes that we're recommending, and at this point, they are uh, they are basically recommending those approvals or those changes. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see this moving along. Yeah, we, we do need to get this, and this will come to the, to the next board meeting, uh, we do need to get this approved uh, before the map panels are, are formally adopted on the 15th of February. I've had issues with my finance, it can be finance. Yeah, and that's, that's the, the new map panels will be much better. They're, they're actually, they have an aerial background <coughs> on it, so it'll be much easier to, to kind of locate a property. The current maps uh, were introduced in 1995. They're very basic. They don't even have all the roads, and obviously there's been some revisions and development built since that time. So uh, the new maps will be much better to to read and understand. Yeah, my house is 25 feet above <laughs> the lowest portion of my property. There's no more the flood zone. So I don't know what flood that would be. All right, Mike, you're all set. Yes. Thank you. Uh, BJ. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, I'd like to give you a quick overview of the development agreement between the village and the Oak Creek Development Partners, which is doing the mixed use development at the next to Home Depot. So, just to give you an, um, the background, the development agreements are voluntary contracts, and the good thing is we can come up with the obligations and standards for development as part of the development agreement. So it's a tool that we're using to actually come up with the standards and conditions as the property develops. So we kind of picked out some of the sections that we'd like to review with the board. Uh, starting with section four, staff came up with uh, certain land uses um, that are not so desirable, and we'd like to keep them out of the commercial parcels. And uh, just looking at the list, when we say nightclubs, we're not necessarily precluding group us, and that is a concern from the uh, developer wanting to make sure they're not excluded in this list. Uh, the village would, um, would have all the utility easements dedicated. We would not own any sidewalks, uh, just the utility easements. Um, any questions on the use list here before I get to the next section? Uh, Section 10 uh, defines the landscaping uh, design for the property. I know there was quite a bit of discussion at the September 12th meeting. There were concerns about, uh, you know, about the open commercial lots. So the developer agreed to put low mold SQC mix for the two paths. The seating areas will have brick pavers, not necessarily unilock grand, but brick pavers and all the crosswalks would be stamped, asphalt, concrete, and I had, there's a hand out going around on that one. And the, the entryway landscaping side, the sign would be landscaped, and also I'd like to point out the model home includes a 17-foot pedal flag, which is not allowed by our sign code, so it's up to the village board uh, either to approve or deny as part of the development agreement. So I'd like to pause at this point and uh, try to 
the way you think about the third flag? I, um, I have huge uh, concerns about this low mo fescue you see. You know, when we approved this plan, I was very adamant that I wanted that commercial area graded and maintained. You know, this is a huge opportunity for us to take a piece of property that's been a complete eyesore for the past 20 years and, and you know, grade it, get some good seating in there. The low, low fescue seat is just, it's, 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 it's not a good product. Um, I struggled with it taking at the Goodings Grove project. Um, it took almost two years for that to come in, and that was constant reseeding and, and, and keeping up with it. And then eventually, the, because of the developer, you know, we uh, weren't going to accept it in this condition, he said, OK, fine, I'll put some blanket down on it. So I, I would like to see stronger language relative to that um, commercial property. Um, it has to be graded and a, 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 a grass seed mix, not the Lomo fescue, which is just, you know, kind of, it's, it's terrible. You've seen it before, and it's, it's very hard for it to take. Then you'll see it just in clumps, you know, here and there. Um, so I'd like to see some, see some better mix out there. And stronger language relative to the maintenance of those commercial pets, because those could sit there realistically for another 10 years. So I want it maintained regularly with the rest of the development. <coughs> And of course, I have an issue with um, remove the feather flags, 17 foot feather banners. We have an ordinance against that, and we didn't, you know, um, Cedarbrook, Amberfield, they they didn't use those or they put those away. Because I feel there's plenty of uh, signage here, according to the uh, illustrations, and then they have construction signs, 96 square feet. So there's more than enough signage, and we have to play. We have to treat everybody the same because then they're, everybody's going to point to this, saying, "Well, you're allowing them to do it. Why can't we have it?" And you know how it happens, where it all they start popping up like mushrooms, because then everybody starts flying these things, and kind of looks trashy. Uh, just so you know, the developers here, John, would like to come up and respond, please. Hello, John Zinsky again. Uh, on the commercial, there is those commercial sites are graded. Uh, that's detailed in the final engineering plans uh, to drain off it appropriately. Uh, the landscape, the low growth fescue mix was the recommendation of the landscape architect. If you want a different seed mix, that is fine. I did commit on September 12th that we would regularly maintain it. Uh, putting that in the development agreement is fine by us because we committed to that. Uh, regarding the feather flags, I asked MI Homes, who will be the town of Builder, to come up with a detailed landscape plan, signage plan for their models. Their general plan does have the feather flags, but if the village does not allow them, right. I that will not be a deal breaker. It's basically they provided everything that is on their wish list. And if something doesn't meet your approval, we will update the landscape plan and get those off. That's fine with us. Perfect. Because, I mean, we, you know, we have to treat everybody fairly. No, no, I, I understand okay. that. Again, I asked them, I said, prepare the plan you would like. And as builders and developers, I can guarantee you, we never get 100% of what we ask for. So that is not worth fighting, fighting for it or even discussing it more than we've already done. Uh, I'd like to, now that you're at the podium, I'd like to go back to the first section uh, under the public improvements. Um, BJ, uh, Director Gaddy had said that um, we are not accepting the sidewalks. And I wanted to make sure that you're in concurrence with that. I know we had, brought, we had said September 12th that we were not going to take the streets. Those were going to remain private. And I don't think a, a decision, or at least it wasn't even a discussion. We, we, we did not discuss that, but I will say honestly, when uh, the board decided to make the streets private, I just assumed everything within the site would be private okay. improvements except for 
the water main sanitary sewer, which will actually be owned and operated by Illinois Water and Illinois American Water. Right. So, I, again, I just want to make yeah. sure you were in comparison. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving down to section 11. Staff uh, came up with some design standards, including the applicant should use the Cyclone brand outdoor light post, which you see right behind you in the Heritage Park, and they agreed to it. And staff also made some anti monotony recommendations to vary the brick color, brick and color combinations on each town home unit, use neutral colors for the garage doors, and also try to vary the design of each garage door. And I believe they actually got the, the elevation they got approved back in September uh, does not show any variations within the garage door, so they would like that taken out. So any comments, discussion on that one? So if you don't put the garage doors, they're all white, one design, uh, no further variations. I think it looks, you know, if you don't vary, you know, if there's no variances with garage doors, I think it makes it look too much like track housing. I, I think there should be a little bit, you know, different, a little bit different styles. But, uh, I don't am know, I going to be open to some window design? That, that's a tough one, uh, and I know one of the trustees went out to our park place, and while we vary colors and brick and stone, and that we've agreed to, garage doors are very difficult to vary. Uh, and actually, park place, we use all the same ones. And actually, I just left that board out. Yesterday was my last meeting, and one of the questions is, if there's a dent in it, how do you replace it? And the board there is very adamant of having, you know, they we even wrote into the new rules, the specific model and color. Uh, because, you know, if you have windows, it's a variation, a slight different window, you know, who's to define what is dissimilar enough on something like that? And since this is a rear, a rear lower product where our front elevations are facing out, and have all the garages face interior into the common open space, and that's why we asked for when we got the preliminary PUD approved that way. We were willing to do the brick, the colors, the siding, but the garage door is something actually that's actually really hard to manage through the construction process to have very colors or windows and things like that. How about is it possible to do like every other one with windows? If you had a similar design, but say every other unit had a row of windows at the top and I believe the intent is to have them all have some windows on. Oh, you know, he did, he did. Uh, let me check with that, but uh, like Park Place, we did them all with windows because we wanted some natural light in the garages. Uh, and I can go back to MI and say, if we're going to have a single type of door, we would like to have, you know, you would prefer to have some windows in them. I can get I, that I think that would look much better. I can get that answer to the. Yeah, maybe we could even. You know, I, I don't want this to stop the process, but I mean, take a look at a render and just see what it looks like where every other one, I don't want to make it look like, you know, a six-year-old's missing teeth either, you know, where it stands all like that. If, if, they, if it looks better and richer to have windows on all of them, they're all, you know, conform to that degree, I, I, I could sign off on that. Um, all right, let me look into that. Will they still, um, will they all be of a, a neutral color or will they stay with the color scheme of each building then? Because we had said that we wanted the uh, well, it's color scheme of each building. <clears throat> okay. Because you don't want uh, let me get. I'm just going to be gray and white, or gray and uh, red brick build, red brick building with a gray siding and a tan door. You want it to right. match that building. Okay. All right, uh, moving on to section 11, uh, we came up with some sunset clauses for the residential and commercial development signs based on their build out uh, timeline. So the residential signage needs to be taken out when they have 90% occupancy or no later than June 30, 2022. And the commercial portion, they're looking up to 10 years, uh, so that's the maximum they get. Uh, so they need to remove the commercial signage no later than January 31st, 2029. Any comments? 
are these construct construction signs going to be illuminated? I mean, just to it's make a, sure that the downward lighting that we're not, you know, spotlighting. That, that's the temporary marketing signage. Oh, okay. Uh, the street lights are the downward light. I just want to say, and you touched on it before, we're guessing on the commercial, and obviously if they haven't sold in that time, why we'd be coming back. But at that point, we're all going to be in the same boat, growing together, trying to market those commercial sites. I would hope they go much sooner than that, but that one is kind of a wag. Right, uh, um, BJ, before you go on, I, I'm sorry, I had one more thing in the, uh, the previous section. I had something about Section 13. Uh, section 13 says that you're permitted to build three model homes. Um, it's a three unit building. Okay, so it's one building, three units? Yeah. Or is it going to be three buildings? No, no, no. You need all in one building. Okay. It's the corner building. I didn't bring, yeah, I didn't bring the site plan up. I believe, quite frankly, MI is actually looking at doing two models currently, and they would sell off the last third one. But I wanted to give them the ability, if they wanted to keep that whole building uh, just for models and not put a person living in that last unit. But it would all be in one building. If we want to add something within a single building, that would be fine. Because if you remember, we agreed to all three or four unit buildings. Right. Right, that's what I, was, I wasn't yeah. sure if you were going to yeah. show yeah. the three, the three uh, footprint and the four footprint and maybe have, you know, two and one. No, it would be a three unit building. Okay. All right, uh, part donation uh, based on the 70, 30 split of the... Oh, sorry, it's a four unit building. So yeah, that's, that's fine. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Thank you for yeah. that. We've had some initial conversations about that uh, 20, um, lot 20 there, being their model, their first model. Right. Mm -hmm. So the park donation based on their 70, 30 split of two bedroom and three bedroom units uh, comes out about 139,123, uh, payable at the time of permitting. So they're definitely going to pay that as cash rather than doing a land contribution. I uh, just want to make sure that's uh, okay with the board. Can we just take out land contribution? Because 1.7 acres does nothing for us. I mean, except for now we got to go and mow it and stuff. So why don't we take it out so it's not even ash and say we want cash? Uh, yeah, we're taking cash. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He just wanted to point that out to you. Then. Yeah. Oh, because I'm just seeing I'm here. So what, what you're showing on here and what I was given are two different things. So I'm trying to go back and forth. It's what I'm giving here. It just says prefer. Prefer, yeah. So that's so I'm just saying just take out the land contribution to strike it. Okay. okay. And is that, at, at the time of burning, that's individual permits? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So section 21, uh, we're recommending to have a fallback special service area just in case the future homeowners association dissolves or no, no longer maintains the, maintains the infrastructure and landscaping. And this is typical in Illinois, you can do a special service area or a special assessment. In this situation, the special service area makes more sense. I know Eric is, knows more about the, the differences between those two if you have any questions. So just by reading this, the essays are restricted to spending their only on capital improvements, so they would not continue to do any maintenance or upkeep, right? Mowing lawns and if, if there was an essay in, in, in place as opposed to an SSA. An SSA would continue to take care of services and build a reserve fund for taking care of capital improvements in the future, right? Correct. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just one cool question on it. I know that takes a uh, public hearing. Would you do that concurrently when we did the final plat process? Uh, I public hearing for the SSA? Yeah, every time I've done it. It's going to be a dormant SSA. Right, no, 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 but I, every community I've done a dormant SSA, they've always done a public hearing. If possible, they will continue. do that when we frame the final plat here next month. This way it's all tied off in a bowl up front. Because I've also seen some places actually forget to do it and then it becomes a rather cumbersome process. So I just like to tie it off. 
Uh, yeah, so we actually have the development agreement and the final plan coming back to you on February 27th. Yes. So the, the development agreement needs a public hearing. We'll uh, make sure it's a public meeting. So. And a public hearing here or for the plan? Oh, here. The, uh, the public hearing? Can we yeah. just go back to uh, the park donation? Just have a quick, maybe you said it and I missed it. Uh, the cash contribution at time of use of individual permitting? Well, that's the. Uh, how, how is that? Is that like a certain percentage of permits that have to come in first? Well, let's build it. Each, each permit that we issue for each unit will need to be calculated for the number of bedrooms and that'll give us a number of. Oh, so it's done. Cash amount that'll be um, required for that. Um, I also wanted to mention I've been working with uh, Will County 911 in, in assigning the addresses for this property. Um, I think we got the uh, numbering down um, and going through the initial plan review of this, this their models. Um, the names happen to be similar to names around Ridley Field, Foster, Belmont, those names. Um, they're looking for, because they're private roads, to, suggested that they name those roads for addressing purposes. I've talked to and I, and they're talking to their marketing people. They may consider that as being the four names, some of the four names. So I just want to mention that as well. Everybody's okay with that. Would you like those names added to the final plan before they got recorded? Like it's recorded? It would probably be preferred. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just tying in with the, uh, the what Trustee Suisse had said about the individual um, payments at the time of individual permitting, um, I don't recall. Maybe in September 11th or September 12th we had talked about this, but do you have a timeline? An anticipated timeline on, on finishing? We actually did a market study, and the thought was the townhomes would be absorbing about two to two and a half units a month. So we were believing it was about a three-year build-out from the time the model opens. Okay which uh, right now MI would like to commence development, plus or minus the middle of March, weather dependent, which would put them in a position to probably have a model roughly around August. But you think maybe a three year anticipated? Yeah, that, that's the anticipated uh, okay. timeline. We just finished the community in Lyle with them, that they, it's smaller, that they did in just over a year. Any price point on these now, again? Uh, I did not check back with them on what they anticipate. Their but when we started in September, we were working with them. They were anticipating having the base prices starting up around 300000 to 320000 and then with options. So I would anticipate your average sale price is going to be somewhere between three twenty-five and three fifty. There, There will be some that people add more options that may spike, but I think your average is going to be in that range.
executive session meeting will be Monday down before we know uh, action taken. So.